I do love that music. I had to have a bit of a dance. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Creative Change Workshops. My name is Hannah Aria and welcome to the show. If this is the first time that you're joining us, I'll give you a quick explanation. Basically, we release pre-recorded art tutorials every week. We challenge you as an audience to get involved and give the activities a try. And then we have our lovely live stream show and tell online TV program, which is this. And every week I have a different wig on just for fun, for no real reason, just because it's fun to do. We also have Face Paint Fridays. And today, is it this side? I've got three little hearts. And anyone who rocks up with face paints gets a free pen. And I think I've shipped out at least 25 pens in the last fortnight. So if you want to be in with a chance, we'd love to see your work and we'd love to have you live on the show. Now, this week we are looking at quite a sensitive subject. This is our last one on the subject of mental health. And it's based upon the ideas of a piece of art done by um, William Kulik. So the original piece of art was done when he was in a psychiatric hospital and he was being looked after there and through art therapy he was able to kind of really release and express some of these really difficult memories. So the original picture shows all different rooms inside his head. It's literally like a skull kind of opened up and you can see in different rooms as different characters. So we challenged you to make your own version. Now for some people this can be quite emotional it can bring up stuff that is quite difficult and we don't want people to be unnecessarily upset so what we're going to do is we're going to put up um, a helpline number and if you are upset by anything that is mentioned in the program please contact Samaritans and feel free to just turn off the video you don't have to carry on we want this to be an enjoyable experience but equally we know that we need to have a duty of care to make sure that everyone's okay. We're going to have some wonderful live guests who are going to be sharing their creations. But equally, I just want to say to you guys that only share what you are happy with people in the public arena seeing. These videos, these live streams will be put on our YouTube channel. So just think about what things you want to keep private and what things you're happy to discuss. There is no pressure to disclose anything. And I think it's just going to be a really interesting time. This is a safe place and we're really, really supportive. We want people to be able to be open about their experiences, to break down the barriers of stigma around mental health. So hopefully we're going to have a fantastic time, but we just need to be sensitive around this topic. OK, our first guest tonight is Natty. Natty, can we get you up? Hello. Can Hello. we hear you? Oh, brilliant. Um, Jasmine, are we able to make Natty awesome. a bit bigger? If possible, so we can see her lovely face. Tell us about Ooh. this face. You've got stickers on. Face paint Friday. Can we have a close yeah. look? Oh, you've, you've got you've got jewels. You look all sparkly. Beautiful. Beautiful. And so last week, Natty did some fabulous face paints and we couldn't get her on the live because of tech issues. So she'd gone to a lot of effort. So she's already earned herself a pen, which hasn't arrived yet, but she's now going to get a couple of pens. So well done, Natty. Oh, and you've got some artwork. Lovely. Well, we're going to start off by catching up with your Sticktopia bits. So Jasmine, the magical fairy, is going to get them up. Do you want to tell us about these then? <clears throat> I started in pencil first. And on the one that's on my right side, I decided to do some blending techniques with colour and pencils to get the yeah. right colours for what I needed and, and tones. And then... In the middle, there's somebody pulling their hair out. In the background, there's someone, kids playing football, and they've got the nets and that. There's a smiley face in the sun, 
and then it's just basically some bushes and some sea. You've got some brilliant textures going on there. You can tell that you really watched the tutorial video and put it into practice, which is awesome. Um, and I love the fact that there's so many different characters. There's quite a few different stories going on there, aren't there? Um, and we know that you have submitted. I like the one where he's pulling out his hair. <laughs> yeah, what's going on for that stick person then? Tell us a bit about that. I don't know. That was the, that was that was the first one that came into my head, and I thought, well, oh, I don't want to draw any hair, but I'll put the hands connected to the head, so then people yeah. can invert it to as way they want. So it could be pulling out hair or just hands up to your head because. In the old days, you've got, um, I think it's another ethnic minority. They carried the, the wells or the bowls on the head full of water. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really interesting. So there's a lot of things that could be interpreted as quite expressive and telling a story there then. Wonderful. Now, would you like to do a proper presentation of your... William Kulek thing next week, or do you want to talk about it now? It's up to you. What time have you got? Okay. So, I've if you want to, can you? Yeah, got, if you want to show it on, on the screen, my little, my little book. If you can, sh and then if Jasmine can make you a bit bigger, so maybe we can see see you close up. You lift it up a little bit, Natty, and then oh, fantastic. Oh, that's great. Okay, so do you want to tell us about these then? Basically, you said this that... is all the colours that are in the brain, and it, and it's all the brain cells. But if you look closely, where is it? There, there's a little green spot and yeah. a yellow spot. Now, it, that's like that because. I suffer with migraines. I suffer with migraines. So yeah. I've had to scan, and in my brain, that's what they see. When there's pain, it swells. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really interesting. I love all that sort of MRI stuff. So that's quite scientific. And that's awesome. when you get a headache. Wow, so you can see the bit that's sort of like highlighted on the screen. And, and then you've I've got, got another one, one as well, haven't you? And that's the other one. I can't, it's not quite as clear, this one. Um, do you want to tell us about it? Oh. That's better. Um, just loads of different things going on. And did you, how did you find loads doing this? Things going on, really. Did you enjoy it? Fun. Good. Yep. I'm glad. So we've got Brilliant. three people. We've got a hair dryer. Someone, someone's um, right lace outside of their line of their face, flower, and um, the st the stairs go in spiral in care, like that you talked about last session. Mm hmm. Um, vases, mobile phone, and some night night thing. Stairs, pictures, a coffin, a light bulb, and reading books in bed, and the dog at the bottom of the bed, and candles, paintbrushes, pots, and birds with flower under the neck collar. Oh, wow. You've really put a lot of time and thought into that. So thank you so much. What a great start to the show. So I'm really pleased that, firstly, that you're able to make it. Secondly, that we managed to show both weeks' work. So absolutely fantastic. And I will definitely send you another pair when you've got it. We'd love to have a picture of you with your purple pen, okay? So goodbye for this week, but thank you, Natty, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Wonderful. And I forgot to say that Jasmine the Magical Fairy has got her wings now. Are you able to come and show everyone your beautiful purple wings? I think we need a close-up, Jasmine. I need to spot 
spotlight yourself. I really Center just, stage. It's suddenly gone very dark <laughs> in my room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like you're at a rave or something. Like you're going out. It's like lockdown. I'm, I'm at an hour. Lockdown's ne- yeah. nearly finished, and you're like, I'm going out, out. <laughs> Technically allowed to now, but I've got my got my fairy wings on. <laughs> oh, they look beautiful. We love thank them. <laughs> so thank you very much for all you do. Jasmine, the magical fairy, is our tech support. And she makes everything run smoothly, don't you? So I try. I try my hardest. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, now we're going to look at Katie's work. Katie sent some in. Oh, Mandy's hopped on the live. Happy Friday, Friday lovely people, she says. Daisy's here, lovely colours. <laughs> Yes, if you are watching on the live, please type in on the chat box and let us know that you're here. We really want to get to know each other and create a real kind of community atmosphere. Oh, Daisy says, Natty's art is great art. And that's from Daisy, who runs Art Eat Festival. So she is a real professional in the arts arena. So thank you, Daisy. And this is Katie's Wig of Wisdom from week one. She was a bit late joining, but she's caught up, which is amazing. And she's she's done some beautiful stuff. I love that she's got the leaves and the flowers in. Katie really, really loves nature and really benefits from being outside and enjoying the sunshine. So that's really reflected here. And she loves collage, which is also quite evident. Ah, fantastic. We've got lots more guests coming up as well. We've got the lovely Omar, who is a VIP. I've known him since I was about 16, I think. So he might have a few stories to tell. <laughs> anyway, next, I think we've got another one from Katie. Is this, I think this is her brain one or her amazing mind one. Now, I have I got, let's have a little look. I've got a bit more information about this that I can read out. So. She said, my head is still in progress. Self-doubt around my drawing meant that um, to really embrace the subject um, was quite tricky. So she retreated to collage again, which she feels more comfortable with. It's unfinished, but I thought I'd share where I'm at. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Katie. And it is great to have you with us again. Katie is a cheerleader amongst us. She's always putting nice, positive things in the chat and cheering other people on so if you see some work that you really like it'd be really great if you could put some positive feedback in the chat as well excellent right moving swiftly onwards I've been told I've got to be tight on time again today so I'll try, I have to keep it to an hour or I'm going to get cut off so I've got to keep focused got to keep focused next we have Sam as a live guest I think, oh have I gone too far Omar Omar <laughs> Welcome. Oh, I how you bad, didn't I? Can we yeah. can we get Omar looking a bit bigger? He just seems a little bit small on my screen. Sorry. There, oh, there we, we go. go. Yeah. There we I go. am loving the hair. Loving the Thank hair. Thank you. I actually did it specially for you guys, and I didn't really know what I was going to go do with it, but I thought, you know what, let me just put it up. I'm I'm quite sad that you didn't bring your face paint game though. Come on. Do you on. know what? It's funny you say that. I actually was given some face paints today, and I sat there and I was like Destiny. nearly tempted. I was nearly tempted, but I literally was um I was just on a walk with me grandma, so <laughs> I just thought. And then I came back in and I was like trying to get the, all the tech stuff sorted oh, out. Oh, you did Apologies. well. You made it. You made we, it. I, we, I did get here in the end. So. But now I know you have face paints, you're going to have to come back next week with your face paints. You know that, right? All right. If that's my challenge here for next week, <laughs> then yeah, I'll, I'll, yes. I'll definitely come with a face paint. Bring your face paint game. That would be epic. Yeah, that's fair. Cool. So, Omar, you are a talented musician and artist and various other stuff. Do you want to tell us <laughs> a, in about a little nutshell kind of like sentence a little bit about you? Well, okay, so a little bit about me. I do paint and I do do music as well. Um, I'm a singer-songwriter, but I've also worked with young people and people with disabilities in the past and especially very heavily within the arts. Um, It's been in the last three years I've kind of really thought about pursuing a career within art, which um, 
I'm now actually doing at the moment, which is, you know, taking its moving slowly, but we're getting there, which is actually really exciting. And then obviously I know Hannah. So then Hannah's introduced me to this amazing group and this, so I thought, all right, then I'll come down and check you guys awesome. out. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, right, question that I haven't mm. like told you about. What was your first impression of me? Can you remember? Oh, yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> you were really shy. Was and I? I remember, like, just, yeah, because I, I, I attended school there and I think we met in um, sixth form, didn't we? Yeah, you came yeah. from a different high school. And I just remember you kind of was just a little bit unsure about yourself. And, you know, oh. but when, as soon as we spoke, you were really friendly and stuff. And it just, you know, and we've just been friends ever since. You, co- you used to call me Ariel. I remember I that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was, there was lots of things of back in the um, days, in the sixth form days, like we used to come back. I remember seeing you like before you used to go into your class and it was like, yeah, all right then. So, so you're still working on that piece. You're like, yeah, it's just taking a long time. I was like, yeah, they do, don't they? But, um, but I think, you know, performing arts that you were you were oh, yeah, forgot about that. yeah we you did that as well fire. yeah oh, yeah we used to do <laughs> the little dances and and singing you know like the cabaret life is a cabaret old chum <laughs> you know that was great so you know all the performance but I think they kind of fuse anyway yeah art definitely. and performance and music you know even if I don't know about you guys um when, when I create I listen to a lot of music and it helps me to kind of get into my art zone. And depending on what I'm creating or the mood I'm in, will depend on what kind of music I'll be listening to. So, absolutely. And since then, I, I suppose mm-hmm. for both of us, we've had quite quite a roller coaster ride in life, haven't we? Of course, um, yeah. And um, I'm really pleased that you're able, like, you know, to be such a great role model, but also to be open about your experience of PTSD. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think maybe you could tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's fine. I've uh, just literally just cleaned my glasses because I just realised how dirty they were. <laughs> right, there we go. Now I can see you a lot clearer. Um, yeah, so when I was um, at university in Birmingham, unfortunately, I was stabbed in my back. Um, this happened on the night out with some friends and also my friend was stabbed and he unfortunately uh, didn't make it and he passed away. So for many a year, I had a lot of survivor's guilt. I had uh, social anxiety, um, just anything mention of kind of anything knife crime related or, you know, seeing people in confrontations would always kind of make me feel um, threatened or anxious or, and, and nervous and, and scared even at times. So it took a very long time for me to kind of be able to process that. Um, and with that, a lot of what I realized was there's probably an echo of millions of people that are going through difficult situations and times similar to what I was going through when I didn't really know what to do. Um, I was always uh, one of those kind of people that was considered, I think, the strong one or, you know, the fun one and stuff like that. And when you are a person that a lot of people come to for support or aid, it's very difficult for you sometimes to ask for help because, you know, there's the, the shame aspect that comes in from it, especially from a man uh, or, or male's point of view. It's sometimes considered to be a weakness to show how you feel or if you're hurting or if you're scared or if you're worried about things. And these are all signals, that these emotions that you're feeling that aren't are valid and they shouldn't be invalidated because you feel them or you feel that they're negative, they're giving you messages. And it's, I think it's really important that we, we speak more openly about mental health and how people can feel at bad times in their life. Because there is, you know, everything start, things start and they end. And sometimes when you do go for it, it just feels like it's never going to end, but it, it can end. But, you know, you have to um, reach out to the right people and, you know, speak to your family and your friends and your loved ones for support. Well, that's a, such an amazing story. And like, just knowing you, like, and mm. how, you know, everything that you stand for, like, morally, ethically, like you went in to do youth work as well after that, didn't you? Yeah. So, so that whole, be, being <laughs> Which, a role I don't know how I managed to like, <laughs> but that's the thing what was amazing about that, Hannah, is, at that moment when I was doing that work with these young people, I was still hurting mm, and I was still going through my own um, 
problems at the same time. Thank you, Tess. Um, and that's the reason why I kind of realized that these these young people, these these young men and young women were literally kind of going through life where they didn't actually have any life experience yet. They just kind of had experienced trauma or loss or pain and they didn't know how to process it. And for a lot of them, it meant them being excluded from mainstream education. For some of them, it meant them being incarcerated. And unfortunately, we have a system that doesn't acknowledge fully that actually when these people go into these places what are we actually doing are we punishing them or are we trying to better them are we trying to make them be able to be a part of society one day um and it's still one of those questions that i don't think has actually ever been answered and is probably now in the in our lifetime i think possible to be answered like actually is there a better way to do I'm what we're doing from educating our children and looking after our elderly people down to because it's the mental health of everybody i think as um i'm a father myself now um i now realize how important it is of the development of the early years of childhood i also understand what how the how important it is when you are a teenager to be able to express yourself yeah. and not always have somebody or your parents kind of like telling you what you should and shouldn't be doing and also when you are an adult is sometimes being able to see things happen and kind of allowing a younger person the same space that you wanted when you were their age. It's, you know, in, like even now I'm at, at 36, there's a wealth of knowledge that the elderly can give you, which I've learned so much by working with older people, the senior members of our society. They've got such wealth of knowledge to give us an experience that we're not tapping into. We're just, you know, leaving a lot of people in OAPs and in, and in centres where they could connect with young people and give them life experiences that these children and teenagers would valid would be invaluable for them in the future. You've made Sorry, me go all goosebumps. Yeah, do you, do you know, know what? I got, a little, I got a little bit choking like, myself thinking up. about it because I, it, it is actually something that I generally believe in. It's just like, you know what? Um, I think I heard a quote once. I think it was by a man named Mars Moreau. And he said, where do you think is the most wealthiest place in the world? And the answer in, in his word was the cemetery. And he was saying there's books that have gone to the grave that never were written, songs oh, that were never sung, God. paintings that were never painted, because we live in a world that isn't made and set around to reach everybody's maximum potential. It's all about limits. You've got a kind of idea, there's a limit there. There's obviously a reality to everything. You've got to put work into it. But if you dream it, it's possible, but you've got to work towards it. So, you know, Absolutely. that's my say on that. So. Oh my gosh! I need you to come back on the show. You're gonna be like, I'm gonna hire you. We're gonna be a dream team. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Is it? Okay. So, Where are we gonna get with the art, man? That's what I want to see. I know. I know. Now come I'm on. like, uh, all of my timetables thrown out the window. But um, yes. So oh. how has how has art helped you to process some of this? Is my first question, and obviously you can talk about this as well. Um. Okay. So. Um, my experiences just generally from through life is I've always loved drawing. I've always loved um, painting. It kind of was an escapism from a very young age. Um, I just like Disney. I used to see the, like, I think it was Aladdin. I remember being like the first thing I ever like drew. I just saw the cover of it on <laughs> how sorry my age now on a video on a like VHS. <laughs> we don't have tried. DVDs there or, or streaming yeah. services. We had the sex <laughs> that you had to rewind and sometimes blow in order for it to work. But so yeah, so um, I remember just starting to draw then, and it, a big inspiration was through my mum. You know, she's always done art and she's done calligraphy, and you know, it was her hand and seeing her do those things with her own time that made me just kind of like indulge in it more. And then I kind of fell in love with street art. But then, you know, I have a very strict mum where it was just like, if I got caught doing street art and brought home, I don't know if I would be better hands with the police than with my mother. So, you know, <laughs> that was one of those ones. But, you know, I went to a good school. Um, I had teachers that kind of saw that I had some form of potential and they, you know, um, put me under their wing and I just keep on drawing. But this piece, when I saw what you were, asking your audience to make I was really excited about um I had already done the background for it a while back and I didn't know what I was going to do with it and then one day I was just talking 
um, with my grandmother. And then I just started kind of drawing this this head shape. And then I just kind of thought about this sea and his head just being in a sea of like thought. And then you kind of get a little aspect of what's going on inside of the actual the brain or the head or the of the skull of what what's available. So I've got my copy and it's just like there's a little party where there is that is a personal experience for me where I'm a I'm a January baby. And for those people that come from low income housing and, and, and not got a lot of pennies, sometimes when you're close to like Christmas, you get the double up birthday Christmas present. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you know. So it's like I wasn't even on the good side of it. I wasn't before December. <laughs> I was always after. <laughs> so it's like was... Christmas is gone, uh, Boxing Day is gone, and New Year's Eve's um, gone. New Year's Day, <laughs> and what's happened is people are just partied out. They have money now. It's now the, the longest month of the year, and then it's my birthday. <laughs> so I was always like as a kid, oh, I was just like I always felt like I kind of really didn't really get the the full. Um, experience of a birthday so it, I then kind of for many years came to not really like my my birthday um so that was what that one was with the balloon and just a single person um the next one was was just another kind of thought of just a generalization of of kind of like just you know when you just leant against the wall and you just had enough it was just yeah. that really um the floor below was kind of looking at um grief like losing somebody which I think a lot of people will it will understand or one day go through and it's just kind of like the the pain of it, the instant moment of it all the shock you know and the, and the grief um and then the floor below it was kind of like um, an interpretation of some kind of demon or uh, a thought that was that troubles people and you know like you have things at the back of your mind um there's a little character there which is just standing there but he's actually not running from it so what it was is kind of almost like a David and Goliath situation where in this part of my mind is kind of like facing the, the, the problems that I faced. Um, again, below that is kind of like with some eyes, with some ghosts, again, with um, I think again with mental health, sometimes it does go to some very dark places. And I did want to show it, um, but just not in as a sinister of a way. And then there was just like seaweed and, and kind of like the, the general thing. So I did try and like soften it up a little bit because all right on the top there's some little birds that you will see, but you have to see it closer because it's outlined of a bird, two birds on the top. Uh, Jasmine's telling me Chris Whitty says next slide, please, which means I need to hurry up, Ava. Yeah, which is such cool. a shame because honestly, I could talk all night. And mm -hmm. I just think, especially with well with everything that is going on in history right now it's really interesting to see that face of of the black figure and with mm. with with the eyes sort of like covered as well like i feel like we could really go into like a whole lot yeah of it, stuff, it's, you know, know with the with the net and on, on it was just kind of like meant to be like um fishing net and mm. where you know we were aware of the pollution that's happening with the sea as well which is on my mind you know worrying yeah. about our environment our planet so there's all these other things that kind of can be entangled around you, but then you've got other things that are beneath the surface, which you can't always see. Oh, that is awesome. So I'm sorry to have to move on, but thank you so much no, for sharing fine. your artwork, for sharing your story. And we would love for you to come back next week and bring your face paint game. So <laughs> the challenge is on. Okay. We'll see. But you take care now. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, Omar. Brilliant. Wow. That was powerful stuff, wasn't it? He's such a great guy. And now we have our cover girl, Sam, joining us. Sam, Hello. and you've got face paint. <laughs> yeah. Yay! I had a go with a butterfly and a dolphin. <laughs> are we are we able to get a close up, Jasmine, of, of Sam's lovely face paint? Oh wow. Well, the butterfly, yeah. And there. Dolphin. Oh, and the dolphin as well. They're beautiful. <laughs> I love it. And your glasses are really cool colour as well. It's all really nice and bright. So, <laughs> yeah. yes, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be out of pens soon. Oh, <laughs> I've got to tell you guys one thing quickly, and I'll get told off for waffling. But the pen company contacted me this week, which was really funny because they know I've been giving out these purple pens and being like, take a picture with your purple pen. 
so they're sending me these super deluxe pens in the post for me to show you guys <laughs> with little sanitizer sprays on top which is so funny and so random but if people go all out maybe the ultimate prize could be one of these sanitizing pens you never know yeah. <laughs> anyway let's look at your artwork and then okay. sorry for waffling. yeah tell us explain well, um, i use that template that you put on the workshop and um the shape and then i used a h pen pencil for the sort of lighter detail once i was happy with it i used a 6b pencil just to get more of the dark uh, shading in um it's got a bit of science in it because i've got a bit of a science background but it's probably not anatomically correct. My a friend Kate, the doctor, will probably tell me not. But it's got the capillaries around uh, the edge of the brain, and then we've got the uh, neurons in the middle. And I put a heart where the uh, frontal lobe is, because that's where you're supposed to feel love and things. So, yeah, oh, you can see that you've even got little synaptic gaps and stuff. Yeah, oh, I love it. <laughs> I, love I love all of that. Yeah. Yeah, and then a pituitary gland um, down the bottom for hormones and things that also control our feelings. It's quite yeah. a lot of anxiety in my brain still. I can see that when I when I, after I produced it, the top part is all the news and all the sad, um, scary things. And my health to the right of that. Um, but below, I've got some of my coping mechanisms like writing and phoning my friends or messaging my friends and walking uh baking yeah baking's on there um my family are in the middle yeah <laughs> i think it's, are, it's just really balanced up. isn't it it's it's beautiful because it's like it's a really honest representation of the good and the bad but in a really yeah. balanced kind of way yeah. oh, so i think fun. i might do it quite regularly because it's gonna help me see how i am because it's gonna yeah. change over time i think so that's I a great idea. Yeah, six months or something could do it, couldn't you? Let's I was see. just thinking maybe like it's just giving me an idea. Like, you know those flicker books that you can do where you oh, see yeah. the little stick fan. Oh, we should have done that for Sticktopia, shouldn't we? It would be really <laughs> interesting tool for all of us to kind of look at how we change over a certain period yeah. of time with our, what's going on in our minds. So very, awesome very idea. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Sam. Mm -hmm. Lovely to have you back. And You've got another pen if you would like another pen. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And you've had lots, we've had lots of great comments, which are now going to scroll across. Just, oh, great. you know, I've, I've gone over time. But hope, read all the lovely feedback. Yeah. And Thank we'll you see much. you next week, hopefully. So bye for now. Right. Oh, and we've got your poem. Jasmine the Magical Fairy, as you're not dyslexic, would you mind reading out the poetry for us? Because I think it will sound much more impressive if you yes. do it. No worries. You. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Although we would like to see your wings, or have you taken your wings off? Oh, I've taken my wings off. I'm very okay. uh, That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. No problem. So, in my mind, I Samantha Glynn. My mind is busy. There is no real switch off. It flits from one thought to another. A to-do list, a future plan, what was said, what was done. Memories, worries, responsibilities, and at last, hope. Even in my sleep, my dreams are vivid, sometimes full of explosive colours and emotions. There are familiar faces, yet obscure objects, sights and conversations. Just as I am starting to understand the dream, I am awake. The cat is whimpering to be let out. It's a new day, and with new ideas. So many connections. I hope I can't wear my brain out like my other body parts. Wow. I love that we're getting poetry and spoken word and stuff. So yeah, if you are ever inspired to do some written work to accompany your art, we would also love to see that too. Great work. And now your, I was going to say your other half, your twin, <laughs> Charlotte is going to join us on the live. Hello, Charlotte. Hi there. Hi. Have you got a face paint? So I can't see from here. No, but I've got a bright t-shirt on. So. wonderful you've brought the color and the vibrancy <laughs> fabulous <laughs> so let's have a look at your work thank you yeah Excellent. this was 
I love doing this. I did it one day and I just was in the zone the whole way through. It was brilliant. Um, it should be on its side, really, for the task, but I like it standing up. So <laughs> it works well. And uh, I've just explained the bottom bit. It's a path, really. Um, and the head part is where I want to be, where I where my dreams are. So I'm getting quite close to those now, which is great. But my path wasn't very easy. Um, I have a pit of despair at the bottom, which I was in for quite a number of years. And um, I didn't quite realise I was. Um, and I felt oppressed and I felt I was conforming and I wasn't being me, which was really difficult. Um, and then there were some events that happened that took me up this steep path towards the head. Um, which have been challenging in their own way, but have been really good. So I did my master's. Um, well, I got divorced before all this. I had my son, who's been amazing. I did lots of art. Um, I had some challenging jobs. I was actually a chief officer of a small charity. It all happened at once. I was a busy bee, and I was very, very busy. Um, and then I got to furlough, and I stepped back and looked at everything, and realised what was important in life and had six months off work, which was the first time I'd ever had a break. Um, mm. And I developed my art even more. Um, my um, purpose in life came quite clear. I wanted to be a really good mother, which was one of my main purposes. And the lion there is the roar because I've always been someone that's been quite polite, never really outspoken, um, sort of put up with things and I shouldn't have put up with things and now I'm now I'm roaring when I need to when when things aren't right I'm actually saying that, that so that's, a, that's a major step for me a major step and I've got values as well which have come very clear in the most recent years and I love the rainbow um, and the lighthouse shows me where I should be going and the two uh, girls at the top and me and my sister Sam who was just speaking beforehand very important to me through growing up and then in the actual middle is the heart and my Christianity. Um, and then I've got um, on the right, I've written a book, My Journey to Artists, to help other people become artists, because what Omar said is very true. People don't know their talent and they die before they've even shown it. Yeah. Um, and they just, I just want to tell them, show the world what you've got. You know, it's just so amazing. And it's came up, come out through furlough. So I'm doing some frazzled to focus courses with creatives now to get them really ah. out of their shell and really focusing on what they need to, to really be uh, successful. So that's great. And then I, I've always loved fun and travel. Um, my son's on the left there because obviously being a good mum is a major part of my life. And then recently I've been wearing brighter clothes like the rainbow dress to just shout out the joy that's inside me um, and show that light out. And I've met someone called Leon recently who obviously likes the same thing in the pink hair. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's my picture. <laughs> that is fabulous. And um, we'd love it if you could post some more information in our Facebook group about the book that you've done and all of that yeah. information. Because that, that sounds awesome. We'd all be yeah. very interested. So that's awesome. Thank Brilliant. you so much, Charlotte. Thank and you, Hannah. It's been a pleasure again. We'd, we'd love you. to have you next week and feel free to get involved with Face Paint Fridays if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's not obligatory, but it's actively encouraged. <laughs> Wonderful. Right. Oh, we've got Tess. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tess. Oh, I spy a bit of Face Paint Friday action. Mm -hmm. Can we have a close up, please? Oh, we've already put your artwork. I want to see. Can we have? Oh, there we go. What are these, Tess? Hello. These are um, going along with my work this week. So oh. on the the black and the <laughs> the black and the red are um, pain and darkness and you know hopelessness, and the white and the green signify light and growth. And oh wow mm. I knew you were going to come up with something philosophical and deep <laughs> I love it and you look radiant today thank you oh let's get your wonderful work up 
And thank you for posting your picture with your purple pen as well. That was oh awesome. yes, yeah, I've been using it today. <laughs> they're quite good, aren't they? Actually, for a free mm. pen, I think they're quite nice. Although I have a slight complaint, I don't like blue pens. I only like black pens. <sighs> Well, we'll see if this sanitising spray one is black and I'll let you know. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Great. So, yes, tell us about it. So this is um, carrying on my bipolar theme. So on the on the um, left, you've got the, the dark, the pain, the hopelessness, um, all those things that just wash over you and then on the green side there's the light the um hopefulness the um just trying to sort of break free from everything on the on the other side really i love that they're facing each other yeah well it's, it's um it's, it's all part of the dual bipolar thing again so it's, it's like in a way well this is my perspective but obviously it's different from for you but it's almost like you've come to the realization that you can't hear anything i think we've lost her she'll be back soon Are we still live then? Or ah, oh, yes, we are still live. But oh, Hannah right, okay. Seems to have frozen for a second, so I don't know what's happened. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just waffle on about my um, bipolar brain then at the moment for a bit. Yeah, let, uh, let me start my camera, and I'm going to take over from Hannah for a sec. Let so <laughs> let's hear about the rest of your story with the art. Um. Well. Obviously, all the things on the red side, I experience, I have um, sort of manic, manic depressive, depressive stages and then lighter stages. So um, when when I'm depressed, I feel alone. I want to hide. I feel like I'm falling. Everything's impossible. And then on the on the green side, um, it's me fighting back. Amazing, amazing. I think everybody can resonate with that sort of journey, whether you're having a bad day or whether you have something like bipolar, you know, everybody has these these peaks and troughs and it's about learning to to fight it. But thank you so much for sharing your story there, Tess, and for being on. Okay. Thank you so much. I know that we are conscious on time, so I am gonna is that have you just submitted one piece? Is that right this week? Yes, yeah. Just you, one one week. Cat, you needed another cat this week um no we still need to find a name for the other one no, um we were thinking i was thinking crystal crystal should we, yeah should we yeah i don't know cool. why crystal just sort of just seemed appropriate seemed okay <laughs> cool i will thank you so much and hopefully thank we'll see you. You next. no worries right so i'm gonna have to try and produce and host here who is next Okay, so we have Leslie's art next. Um, unfortunately, I'm so sorry, Leslie. I don't have the script here, so I um, don't know anything about your art, I'm afraid, but we can all just sit and have a look for a second. It looks amazing. Okay, so next on the list, we have Sally. Again, Sally, I'm so sorry. I'm going to skip through to the people that we have on the live. Let's get Nikki and P on. Hi. Hey. Oh, you're off. You're off. Let's yes. move you across. There. Oh, hi. Thank you so much for joining. It was great to have you every week. I'm Hannah stand in for the minute because she's having to. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Whose artwork is this? Who's first? That one's mine. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Um, actually, uh, amazingly, I got ideas even whilst I was just watching the video. I thought, oh, because oh. I've been processing, um, uh, digitising a load of my dad's photos to get them on yeah. 
um, so that he can see them on his TV screen, really. Oh, so no. I've got loads of old photos of myself. And the first thing I thought of was actually the one in the middle um, where I'm sort of on the monkey bars, um, sort of playing. I'm in my 20s. I'm unleashing the inner child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I love it. I love uh, looking back at old pictures. I, I personally carry a, a disposable camera around with me. I buy one from Boots and it's it's such fun. It's I love getting pictures developed. Like it's such a, I think people don't understand the value of developing pictures and finding them later. So I, I love it. Yeah. And um, of course, having been going back through all the old photos, and um, so I've got sort of towards the back of my brain, which I think is more sort of the instinctive Mm -hmm. um, part of you, because I've always loved animals. I've always had an affinity with animals, um, and I do mean sort of all animals. So I've got a picture of me when I'm a baby, sort of when I'm. I've got. I don't think we had a cat, so I don't know where the cat came from, but the little <laughs> cat. <laughs> and then sort of um, when I'm feeding the pigeons, and I I do love reptiles as well. Oh, and this wow. child showing me his snakes. I think Hannah's back on. So Hannah, <laughs> really <laughs> to to this, this is why we need medical fairies, isn't it? <laughs> My internet just cuts out in the middle of nowhere and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm back. We're all right. And we've just shown what great team we are. So well done. What have I missed though? Like on my <laughs> On my schedule, we've, we've had Tess and Nikki. Oh, right, yes. So have yeah. we just started with you, Nikki? Have, have we had Pete yet? No, no, we haven't had Pete yet. <laughs> so we have, I love, oh, I always saw this one. It's brilliant. Go for it, Pete. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, um, I went off on the tangent. And as soon as I saw the uh, Kurilek artwork of uh, the inside of the head, I couldn't help thinking of the uh num skulls children's comic characters um and they started in the bees in the 1960s and they've been going i don't know whether they're currently in any comics but they um have been around recently and they've been in lots of other comics as well um and um i, I looked up the num skulls on wikipedia and um, it said the num skulls stood out from the other comic strips in the bees in that it addressed the metaphysical questions that fascinate children and philosophers, such as where do thoughts come from and why do people uh, do as they do? So basically the comic characters have got, um, uh, it's looking inside the head. It was originally a man in the original um, comic and later on it became uh, a young boy. And um, each of the characters does a little bit of um, what he does in his head, thinking and sensing and um, those sorts of things. So um, this is what it's all about. Now, in the past, I, I suffered from anxiety and, and high levels, seriously high levels of stress. So this is about stress, although actually for the past couple of years, I haven't really experienced serious stress. But this is this is what it's about. I mean, people experience stress all the time anyway, even if you've got good mental health. There are times when you just go, ah, and that's what this um, item's about. Now, this is a whole picture, but um, we'll zoom into individual parts of the picture. So good. I love these. <laughs> so at the top, you've got the art part of the brain, the creative part of the brain. Um, and as you can see, the little artist there has started to, to paint something, and it's Edward Munch's The Scream. Cool. Uh, so, <laughs> so in that part of the brain, uh, the, uh, the character is aware of the stress in life and is letting it out in, in a scream. Um, on the right-hand side, you've got the, the rational a technical mathematical brain um, and he's puzzling over some uh, equations on the board they're complete nonsense by the way but but they they look good all those <laughs> squiggly lines I love mathematical notation um, whether you understand it or not I think it looks uh, 
it looks fantastic. Um, okay, I will go to the next slide. Um, oh, and uh, the character on the left is th the ears, and he's listening through the ear uh, and relaying uh, the information to the central processor, which you'll see um, in a moment. The self, the per your read, I suppose, is in the middle, and he's on the phone line, just like the two characters at the top communicating with the, the central part of the brain. And on the white hand side, you've got the eyes looking out, and he's going to report what he can see. Um, so those two parts of the senses of the brain. Um, okay, we'll have another look at the next uh, one. Uh, and th this is the aroma department. The the the, the, um, the numbskulls had a character with a big nose who who took in all the smells and um, communicated those to the uh, to the cent brain central processor. Um, and on the right hand side, you've got the memory department, and he's opening a filing cabinet, and all sorts of memories are exploding out of the the drawer of the cabinet. Um, incidentally, I used um, a drawing package to draw these. I did originally start with um, freehand drawing, but I thought my cartoon uh, drawing skills weren't up to it. So I used a drawing package um, and I used basic shapes from the package. And I found I could cut mask bits off and stick things together and, and play around with proportions and get the, the shapes I wanted of simple cartoon characters. Um, brilliant. Kathy says, is that graphic art, Pete? So you've done it digitally. Yeah, it's digitally. So it, it's it's a free um, open office package called Draw, basic drawing package. And um, there are some basic shapes in there and textures. And I found I could use some the textures in, in um, uh, a way in which to represent things that they, they weren't originally uh, intended to. So, for example, the nose is actually a heart shape. Uh, inverting Ooh. and part of its mouth off and so all, all those yeah it's, it's amazing I, I i didn't know it's the first time i've tried this but i found um i could get exactly the shapes i wanted just from uh the more basic shapes and, and sticking sticking them together and as i say masking them off <laughs> oh next slide please yeah <laughs> <laughs> um okay. and this is a central process so right in the middle it is is your conscious mind and all the phones around the outside, all the loudspeakers are relaying from all those other bits of the brain you saw before. Um, there's a picture of the uh, the screen in the top right hand corner and he's screaming into the microphone and in the mouth department, the outgoing messages department on the right, um, the character is, is just screaming through a megaphone. And that's it basically. That is awesome. I wish I had more time, Pete, but I really need to rush on because I've got about five other people in like the space of five minutes. But thank yeah. you. Okay, on, you're ne welcome. Next up, we've got Mandy, and I'm hoping she's bought her face paint game. I'll be shocked if she hasn't, actually. Let's, let's have a look. What have we got this week? Right. Ooh. I've gone a little bit controversial. This so I don't know if you can really see. I put a picture on the thing. Um, I don't know if you've had the story of of the court case with regarding Colin the Caterpillar cake, Marks and Spencer's. Oh, yes, I have, yeah. You no, know, that was my inspiration. Cake is always my inspiration. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's quite funny. <laughs> I bet it's brilliant close up. We'll definitely have to have some pictures in our group, I think. Yes, I, I've, I've, pop, I've popped one on. <laughs> well, I think you're in the runnings for a hand sanitizing spray pen, potentially. Oh, wow. So keep bringing your face paint game. <laughs> oh, Friday's not Friday without face paint, is it? <laughs> exactly. Right, let's look at your wonderful work. Oh. Well, I did actually really, I really like, you know, lots of others. I really, really enjoy doing this bit. Um, but for me, um, birds always resonate with me. They are my um, my my focal point. I've always liked birds when I was growing up. But this is a connection with my, you know, mental health issues that I've been through. And I can always put it back to, you know, birds. Um, starting off mainly is like one of the jibes I used to get you know you're such a bird you, you know um, call that quite often 
But um, then in the middle, I, I like my Robins. Um, I lost my dad, sadly, a couple of years ago. And his nickname was Bobby. So he's Bobby Robin. And it's no coincidence, I don't think, that uh, every significant path that I've took since he's, you know, since he's gone, I've seen a Robin and they just pop up everywhere. You know, it's, and I really, really believe it's him just saying, you know, hello, I'm just here. I'm just letting you know. I'm keeping an eye on you. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that, that, that was my, my main, you know, my main inspiration. And I've linked him down to my heart because he's always there and everything that I do. Um, I've also got a picture on there of an owl with her two little owlets because um i'm a mum of two you don't ever change and you're always protecting your your babies although um i think it's kind of like a bit of role reversal they kind of like protect me now <laughs> keep an eye on me which Aww. is good um and g going further towards the back of the brain it's um i actually i was in a domestic abuse uh relationship and this is where my focal point has been you know art has been my go-to since so that's what the cage is about because that's just how i i would describe it it's like being trapped in a cage and you've got, i've got a blank space underneath the cage because when you're in a relationship like that in a situation like that you're it is that is just all how you can describe your brain, really, or you know, you just don't think it is just a blank space, it's just a coping mechanism. Yeah. Um, but then on the positive, I've got um, my birdie, my swallow is breaking free, um, which is the way to go now. I've even managed to put like um, the nest in there, it's like one of how I do my hair. Like yeah. little <laughs> and and the eggs for new ideas and um and then on the on top of that i i sat looking i thought this picture needs something else so i got my little machine out and i cut some cogs out i love the cogs they're brilliant everybody's brain is just going that is what especially when i get an idea mm. you, you know when you especially when you get the project coming up my brain goes 100 miles an hour you know I, and i can't Absolutely. stop until i do something about it you know um but that that's me and that's 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 my i'm, my, my, I'm, my so, sorry. I'm so sorry I'm randy but we have like literally two minutes left yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> and i've got loads of work that i was gonna still show so i know kathy sent a brilliant sculpture thing in that i want to actually oh, give wow. a bit more time to so what i'm gonna say is Kathy and Leslie, what I'll do is I will show your work next week at the beginning, if that's okay, and um, Anna and Sally, because I want to give you the proper time. I don't want to just flash them up. I'd rather that we actually had time to talk about them properly. So I'm sorry that I haven't been able to show them this week, but it will give anyone who hasn't had chance time to catch up as well. So you can always add yours in next week. And I don't know how many of you have seen, but we have a new video out today which is on the topic of home comforts. So our new, basically the next four weeks will all be about the, the theme of homelessness, the issue of homelessness, and we'll be looking at things that relate to that theme. So if you get chance, check out the social justice video. It's really interesting. We've got two interviews on there. And this is the workshop that Tracy has done. And it's about creating small miniature models of objects that make you feel kind of like a sense of home comfort that might be your favorite mug that might be your favorite slippers might be a blanket that you have on the sofa but it's just about appreciating the small things that can make us feel that bit better so we've had such well this week has been incredible hasn't it like i really do wish we had we had more time because i'd want to give you loads loads more time for everybody but especially I'd like to thank Omar for coming and sharing his story. Would really like him to come back next week. And thank you all of you for sending in your work, for cheering along on the um, comments box, for watching, for encouraging us. We really are just building an amazing community and that's all thanks to you. So that's it from us today. Thank you to 
um, all of our live stream captioning and BSL support. Thank you for all of our sponsors to Pretty's Arts Council England and the National Lottery. And we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Goodbye. <laughs>